Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Ejim e. Ross. The website is brickyradio.com. This episode is number eight, and the title is Essence, Ego, and Personality. What's the difference between essence, ego, and personality? Our actual scientific community, including psychiatrists, psychologists, anthropologists, people who are connected with, you know, human conduct, human behavior, they still don't agree completely regarding the meaning of what do they mean, which are essence, what is ego, and what's personality. Many of them believe that they are all the same. But according to Gnostic anthropology, we say there is a huge difference between them all. Some of them are even contradictory. They are opposite. Let's go one by one. What is essence? The essence, the perfume of a flower. What is the essence of the human organism? What is the essence of human life? Well, we should say we are a spiritual beings. We said that before. We are a spiritual beings that descended from the absolute, the homeland of the spirit. We could say God's kingdom, where the universe descended. The universe was created from the absolute. All life descended from the absolute. Because life, as we said it before, can only come from life. Do you remember that we said that before? So we should say essence is our real being. That lives within our heart, you know, in our heart temple. Because the human organism is a temple. And our heart is more than just a muscle to pump blood into the system. It's more than a muscle. It is an endocrine gland. And it's also connected with emotional intelligence. So essence is basically that. All religions define our essence with different names. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, according to Christianity. Other religions, like the Jewish religion, they speak about Keter, Hokma, Bina, which are the same thing. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What about the Hindu religion? Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu. You know, the ancient Egyptians. Osiris, Isis, Aurus, etc., etc. So that's the essence. So is God within ourselves, our immortal being. That divine atom that is part of a gigantic universal spirit of life. And we are just tiny little babies, spiritual babies. And that divine atom is the one that attracted, you know, the proper organism according to different cosmic laws and selected also our physical parents. So when our physical parents procreated us, they, what do they give us? They gave us just the human organism. But they didn't give us the spirit because we are all individual spiritual beings. So that's the essence. You know, in also in ancient religions, we have to understand that we all have an individual spirit. And that individual spirit is called in ancient religions Adman, or also Monad, you know, has different names. So, and then within the Monad, within the Adman, within the individual spirit, the individual spark is God within. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live within that divine atomic particle. It's an atom, it's a divine atom, higher than all other atoms of the human organism. So this is our essence. But our essence at the same time descends into different levels to establish a connection with the human organism. 
So what we call a soul has been developed and created by the same individual spirit. Soul means consciousness. So we have a divine soul and also we have a human soul according to our level of being. So the divine soul is a manifestation of Atman, of the individual spirit, and the human soul is part of the human machine, part of the human organism. In the future, we'll be talking about, you know, about these concepts to be able to understand them better, because in reality, the purpose of life, if we want to ascend into a higher level, is to be able to connect the human soul according to our level of being, with the divine soul, which is already perfect. The soul of God is different than the soul of the human organism. You see the point? So people who reach different levels of masterhood are the ones who have been able to connect and to create a fusion between the human soul ascending into the level of the divine soul and becoming one. This is the mystery of the twin souls. We all carry them within ourselves. But it's a topic for the future. Let's come back into the concept of essence. So essence is basically that, our real being. So who are we? We said it before, we are spiritual beings, immortal spiritual beings that descended from the absolute. What about the body? Well, the body, we have a body. We have a soul, we have a body, we have a mind, we have emotions, we have physicality, we have sexual life, we have instinct, etc., etc. But we are not the body. We are a spiritual beings. So that's the essence. The best of the best within ourselves. We could say it's a tiny little star within ourselves. Now, what is ego? You see, we have to tell me the difference between essence and ego because, as we said, many scientists, many experts in human, human conduct, human behavior, they are totally convinced that ego and essence are the same. With all respect, we are telling them we do disagree completely with that perception of reality because ego is not a spiritual force. Ego is an entity. Ego is part of the human machine and it's also part of nature, but in the lowest level, evolution, involution. They are actually particles of matter that we have inhaled within our human organism that they don't belong to the human organism. We could say atomic particles without the spirit, entities that live within the air, within earth, everywhere in the universe, but they are just matter without the spiritual energy, without the spiritual degree of perfection or consciousness. At the contrary, they are entities. And those entities when we inhale them and enter within our human organism, they become little monsters that suck our energies. And they are the cause of all illnesses, physical, emotional, or mental illnesses. So the ego, and here we disagree completely with those who are convinced that there is an ego and an alter ego. It means, according to them, there is a higher ego and a lower ego, but we say with all respect that ego is ego. There is nothing good about the ego, nothing. The ego is the lowest level of matter within our organism that has to be annihilated because that's the only way to ascend. We could also say it's unconsciousness. It's subconsciousness, unconsciousness, infraconsciousness. And soul means the opposite. Soul means consciousness. Essence is consciousness. So if we want to transform our matter into consciousness, the ego has to be 
annihilated. And the ego is not only one. The ego is the same eye of human behavior. And are we only one eye? The answer is no. We have many, 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 many eyes. 10,000 eyes, maybe? Yes. Even more. These are the same contradictions, you know. The same struggle of the mind. The same conflict that we all carry within our lives. The cause of drama. Individual dramas, collective dramas. The ego, to be more explicit, now connected with religion, is the same Satan of all religions. So, we, we're not trying to scare anybody here, but the ego is something to be annihilated. We should say, is our accounts payable? It's a bad debt. It has to be annihilated because in reality what we did through our wrong behavior, when we forgot the laws of nature that have been given to humanity through all prophets from the past, and Jesus Christ also, that cosmic law has been forgiven, had been forgotten, has been abused. And this is why we created the ego, which is connected also with the animal psychology, but sometimes it's worse than the animal psychology. Sometimes it becomes a very perverse psychology. And this is the cause of war, the cause of violence, the cause of pain, suffering, poverty, you see? And now the ego has been described beautifully by all religions. In Christianity, Jesus Christ was teaching about the seven deadly sins. Do you remember the seven deadly sins? Lust, anger, arrogance, envy, greed, laziness, and gluttony. So, it, when we learn to annihilate those seven deadly sins, we can create the opposite. So, instead of lust, you know, which is animal sexuality, or sometimes perverse perversion within sexuality, that very well explained within the book of Leviticus in the Bible. Leviticus 15 to 18. So instead of lust, shouldn't it be making love with love? Learning to have respect for sex. Because sex is something divine. We're all here because of sex. So choosing, and, and if life, you know, life deserves respect. And of course, sexuality has to be analyzed and comprehended in a much more deeper way than what is happening today in our world. So instead of lust, shouldn't it be making love with love, making love with consciousness, making love with wisdom, inviting God, within the sexual act. Is it, isn't it too much asking? Maybe not. You know, we are here to learn to awaken our soul, our consciousness. We are here to learn to become wise, to transform into real humans, and to stop being intellectual animals. What about arrogance? You know, Arrogance doesn't pay. People who are arrogant and selfish create only enemies because they abuse other people. They feel superior to other people. But in reality, what created that arrogance is in it fear. Fear is the cause of arrogance. So shouldn't we learn to create the opposite? When we annihilate arrogance, we shouldn't we learn to be humble? Because the only way to reach wisdom is by learning to be humble. Number three, you see, envy. Why should we be envious of the success of the others? Shouldn't we be happy for the success of other people? Don't you think that we can learn from those who are successful in life? We can learn something. Then we should be happy for the success of others. Maybe they know something that we don't know. What about greed? Same situation. People create wars 
out of greed. People abuse other people out of greed. People forget their families, their homes, their wives, their children, their husbands, because of greed. People commit all kinds of atrocities because of greed. And where is greed coming from? Isn't it coming from fear of what? Maybe fear of poverty. And it becomes, of course, an obsession. There are people who cannot stop making money. And they believe happiness will come through it. Well, we, we know many cases where billionaires have a very sad private life. Nobody loves them because you cannot buy love with money. Real love, we are talking about real love. What about gluttony? Gluttony. What is gluttony? Isn't it eating and drinking heavily? When we eat too much, you know, we get sick. We create all kinds of illnesses. When we drink heavily, we cook our liver. You see, we destroy ourselves. So instead of gluttony, shouldn't it be moderation? It's nothing wrong with eating properly and drinking properly and enjoying life, but properly, having respect and self-respect for life. What about laziness? You know, it is true that many people, you know, they don't like their jobs. They hate their jobs. They hate their bosses. The people are abusing them. They feel, or their salary is too small. There is something interesting to be discovered through this. All of us, without exception, were born with different talents. We all have the capabilities, you know, to do things better than other people in certain specific fields. Well, this is our vocation in life. So after we finish our job, something that we don't like, we should concentrate after that into trying to develop our own business in what we really love. And eventually, if we love it and we are better than other people, than average people in what we do, in our real vocation in life, I'm telling you, we'll be able to concentrate into that 100% and we will be making more money than in what we used to work before because we are going to prove a point that we are better than average people in something that we really love. So being industrious means that. But also, don't lose your job because if it's paying the rent and food, you know, and supporting your family, you cannot be responsible. So try to be optimistic about recreating your life and learning to become industrious anyway. What about anger? You know, I've been discussing with more than one psychiatrist about anger, and they are convinced, some of them, that anger is good, you know. Oh, yeah, yes, we should explode, you know, with anger. They don't realize that anger is a defect. It's a vice. It's dangerous. When we have an explosion of anger, not only we can become very aggressive, we can hit other people, we can even kill people, and that is too late later, you know, to repent because the person is already dead. We can end in jail. But also, do you know what's the main trouble? When you become angry, you can have a heart attack. You can have a stroke. Not only you can kill other people, you can kill yourself. So there is nothing beautiful about anger. And Today, I'm a very good friend with the, the same psychiatrist we were discussing 20 years ago. They did agree that there is nothing good about anger. So now they are changing their position regarding discussing with their own clients about anger. You know, they call it anger management now. But, you know, it's more than that. Gnostic anthropology can teach us how to transform anger in the opposite. What is that? Isn't it serenity, learning to be serene? and patience. The word patience is coming from Latin Pax Scientia. It means the science of peace. When you have no fear, you never get angry because anger is coming also from fear. So the ego is based on fear. Fear. Because we are wimpy individuals. We have created the ego. We're not courageous enough. It's a time already to learn to become more courageous, you know. The Bible has said, it's written there, only courageous people, only brave people go to heaven. Cowards 
don't. Okay, that's important to be remembered. And also the Bible says something more interesting. It says heaven has to be taken by assault. It means only courageous people who are fighting against their own ego, against their own demons, are the ones who are taking heaven by assault. After the battlefield, after they have defeated their own demons. Now, what about the ego in other religions? Is it mentioned in, in other religions? Yes, it is. In the Jewish religion, we see David fighting Goliath. And Goliath is the leader of a group of monsters. And David defeated the leader of the group, Goliath. And all the other monsters escaped. That's a symbolic manifestation of the ego. Goliath is the same Satan of all religions with his legion of demons. When David defeated the head of the legion, the other little demons ran away. So it will be easier to capture them one by one, annihilate them, and to transform subconsciousness and consciousness, infraconsciousness into consciousness or soul. This is a way of creating soul, creating essence, getting closer to God becoming more and more intelligent, capable of perceiving reality the way it is. What about other religions? You know, in India, ancient Hindu religion, they speak about the battles of Lord Arjuna, exactly what we were saying. The battlefield where Lord Arjuna defeated his own demons and incarnated Krishna, Lord Krishna, or the Christ of the Hindu religion incarnated the cosmic consciousness. What about ancient Egypt? You know, in ancient Egypt, they were called specifically and clearly the red demons of Seth, S-E-T-H. Who is Seth? Well, the same Satan of all religions. The red demons of Seth that have to be annihilated. What about Buddhism? Buddhism Chan from Tibet Buddhism Zen from Japan. They speak about the psychological aggregates. It means something that has to be annihilated because they are invading, invading our psychological universe. They are destroying us from within. And we created them. That was a wrong creation. So we have to learn to annihilate them. What about ancient Greece? You know, in ancient Greece, they had the masculine, a male perception of the ego, and a feminine, a female perception of the ego. The female perception of the ego was Medusa. Remember Medusa? The woman with a beautiful face and her hair were a lot of snakes with a long tail, like a crocodile tail. Men got hypnotized by her. She seduced all men and she killed them after. Well the feminine aspect of the ego within the ancient Greek religion, the ancient pagan religion. What about the masculine, the male perception of the ego? Isn't it the Minotaurus, 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 a black bull, remember? And then the labyrinth, which is connected with the mind. When people get lost within their own mind, this is why mental illness is exactly that. When people are talking to nobody, they get lost already within the labyrinth of the mind. So the worst demons, the worst ego, is the one that lives within our mind. Because our mind can become our worst enemy. Do you realize that? This is why Gnostic anthropology disagrees completely with those schools of esoteric teachings that are concerned about developing the powers of the mind. They don't realize that they are reinforcing their own ego. Is that okay? Of course not. You know, that will make you a monster also. You are given the, the ego, all the powers of the universe. That will make of you a black magician. You will jump into witchcraft and your karma, my friend, will become horrible. You will suffer the most incredible suffering of all sufferings 
in life and also after you die on the other side. So be careful about that. It's up to you if you agree or not. So the ego, there is nothing good about the ego. Again, the ego is not connected with our real being. The ego is the enemy of our real being. It's the enemy of God. And is the enemy of humanity. The ego is the cause, as we said before, of all wars, poverty, violence, crime, prostitution, all kind of human tragedies, conflicts in the family, social conflict, hunger. You see, and this is the situation that today planet Earth is very ill because of the ego. We created we use Mother Nature inhaling elements of Mother Nature, atomic particles that came inside of our organism and we transformed them into evil thoughts, evil emotions, evil actions. And then we became very ill psychologically and we have sent those negative energies into Mother Nature. And this is why Planet Earth is recycling already. And we are aware that global warming is a reality. So many catastrophes are happening all over the world. And we are aware of that. Who created that? We did it. We made Mother Nature, we made planet Earth very ill. And the planet will have to recycle with us or without us. Either we cooperate with Mother Nature, we cooperate with planet Earth, or we are going to be wiped out of the face of the earth. This is a very serious matter, you know, something to be meditate, meditated about. So this is ego. We have legions of demons within ourselves. The time has come to become aware of that and to learn to transform ourselves, our psychological behavior into a more human behavior because we descended into a lower level that is not the real level that corresponds to all of us. Now, what is personality? Personality is, is a totally different entity, different than the ego. It can be connected with the ego, but it's not the ego. The personality is the vehicle to communicate with other people. We develop our personality in our childhood Normally, the influence of our parents, the influence of the school, and later the influence of society. You know, sometimes we could say that it's also something connected with our own genes. You know, the influence of our parents transmitted from generation to generation. This is why there are people who have a strong personality and people who have a very weak personality. Some people are very good to communicate. Others are not. Well, when we die, when we die, the personality continue, continues alive. And that becomes what is called the ghost. Did you know that? So the ghost has nothing to do with the spirit. The ghost is just an entity without the spirit. And it's the same personality of the person when the person was alive. And normally this personality will stay around the home of the person who passed away or maybe will live in the cemetery. And those people who had a strong personality, well, the ghost will continue alive for many, many years because that energy progressively will be dissolved, will disappear, will vanish. But it will last sometime even a hundred years after the person pass away. It's the same ghost. It's nothing good about it. It's nothing. People say, oh, it's the soul of the person who passed away. No, it's not the soul. And some ghosts or personalities can be also evil because the individual was a very abusive individual. Maybe somebody who committed crimes, you know, and that person will continue moving around within the same place that used to visit in a lifetime. You see, so there is no future for the personality, no future for the ghost. Eventually, they all vanish. They all, you know, dissipate. Now, 
it's important to understand also something very interesting. Coming back into the essence, the essence is immortal. Has always been, will always be. It will never die. Because after we pass away physically, the essence continues on the other side and eventually will return to the Absolute. Now, what happened to the ego? You know, the ego also continues alive after we pass away. And sometimes the ego comes back. Remember, the ego is not the spirit. Some people speak, call them body spirits. We shouldn't use this kind of wording, you know, these kind of concepts don't correspond because an entity is an entity. A spirit is an spirit. The spirit is connected with the divinity. An entity is part of matter, part of the chaos of nature that we have stolen without permission from mother nature. And of course, now we have to pay a price for that because of our own conduct, wrong conduct. We don't know how to transform the impressions, you know. And basically the seven deadly sins are the cause of the ego. It's the same ego itself. So the ego continues alive and sometimes manifests coming back like animals. Are you aware of that? You know, there are animals that go into a stage of degeneration. They are not evolving anymore. They are devolving before they disappear and enter within the interior of the earth what we call Inferno or the Immersed Mineral Kingdom. So these entities will go into Inferno and the liquid fire of the interior of the earth, which is the same fire of the Holy Spirit, will destroy them. They will be destroyed. The problem is that doesn't happen frequently. There are cycles and cycles and cycles. Right now, we are entering into this cycle. Many people who are dying today, they go to the other side and they go to the mineral kingdom, the immersed mineral kingdom, and the ego will be destroyed by mother nature inside. But as we said, some of the ego stays on the surface and comes back with physical appearances. For example, have you noticed some dogs? There are dogs evolving. And you can see, you look into their eyes, they are beautiful animals reflecting a lot of dignity, a lot of intelligence. They know how to behave. But there are also other kind of animals, other kind of dogs, very evil look, people, uh, animals that attack people. These are demons manifested physically connected with the ego of people who pass away. But the situation is part of the essence, listen to this, part of the essence of that individual is imprisoned within the ego. It's, imagine the ego is the same apocalyptic beast. The Satan of all religions is a beast, is a monster that has swallowed our own soul. Part of our essence had been eaten by our ego. So when the ego dies completely, incinerated within the center of planet Earth, within the liquid fire, within the immersed mineral kingdom, the fire of the Holy Spirit, our soul, part of our essence, will be released and we'll be able to recapture what really belongs to us, you know, for new lives in the future that are going to be given to us. Or if we have to come back to the Absolute, we will come back with a released aspect of our own essence already eaten by those monsters that are the ego, the legions of demons that ate our intelligence. Now, so this is why it's important to understand clearly what we are trying to say. You know, monkeys, we explain that monkeys, people have a lot of respect for animals, you know, which is okay. but. Monkeys are a species in extinction. Even you see in the jungle there are millions of monkeys. But eventually they will disappear because they are a species in, in a process of dissolution, in a process of degeneration. You know, monkeys are also connected with the essence of people that live here maybe a million years ago. And their ego is coming back, 
in, with different physical forms. So it's important to understand that, you know, because monkeys are very lazy animals. What do they do to contribute to the well-being of Mother Nature? They do nothing. They're lazy bums there, you know, doing nothing. And, and in reality, as we said, Mother Nature doesn't jump. It goes a step by step by step, either going up or going down. So it's important that we understand that. So the ego is that, you know, the ego continues alive on the other side. But it's extremely important to understand something that we need to clarify better and better all the time. Isn't it better to annihilate the ego here, consciously, ourselves, instead of allowing Mother Nature to do it f for us? Why do we have to go to inferno, to the infra dimensions of nature, to the immersed mineral kingdom, to die in the ego, when we can do it here? When we do it here, that's exactly what has been taught through different religions, the battles of Lord Arjuna, you know, fighting our own demons, because a real hero, the word hero, coming from ancient Greece, means that a hero is the one who has defeated his or her own demons. Remember my words. A, a true hero is the one who has annihilated his hidden enemies, which are what? The ego, the legions of eyes that we all carry within. So a hero is in reality an angel, a superior being, a complete human being, and we are here right now in a lower stage, and in reality we are intellectual animals. You know, we don't want to insult anybody, so please don't, be, don't feel insulted, because I also consider myself an intellectual animal, because I have ego inside. But I, I also understand that the purpose of, of, purpose of my life is to learn to annihilate that ego, which is the same animal psychology. When the animal psychology dies, we'll be able to transform into real humans. Okay, so it's important then again, essence is our real being, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, which is wisdom, consciousness, and love. The ego is the opposite. The seven deadly sins, the opposite of wisdom, the opposite of love, the opposite of consciousness, is the enemy of the entire human race. And But it, this is also a test that we all have to pass because the purpose of life has to do with it. We are here to transform into superior beings. Remember what we said in past lectures. Our real ancestors are not the K people. You know, that's a total complete mistake, a scientific interpretation of reality. You know, our real ancestors were super beings, incredible superior beings with 12 senses instead of five. When we annihilate the ego, we'll be able to develop seven superior senses. So it's very, very important to understand that life has a purpose. Life is a great school of learning to ascend within the Jacob ladder. Remember the Bible mentioned that, the Jacob's ladder. You know, we ha and this is not evolution, it's, it's higher than evolution. It's actually a complete, tremendous psychological revolution of the soul. When we do that, it means that we are fighting part of our own inferior nature. Because, you know, we have to learn to annihilate that inferior aspect of nature because that is a superior part of nature and that superior part of nature is the one that we will be capable of creating a fusion with the spirit. Remember that we, we said that before, the purpose of life is to learn to spiritualize matter. The spirit is light. Matter is water you know, and fire. And the Holy Spirit is fire. So we have to transform then the spirit or light into fire and to be able to melt with water. How do we do that? Listen to this carefully, okay? I'm going to try to explain it in a very simple manner. We have to learn to boil the water 
up to 100 degrees. What makes the water boil? The fire. Of course, the fire. The electricity that lives within the oceans, lakes, rivers. So that fire will make the water boil. So we have to increase our level of fire to be applied into water. And when water is boiling, will become what? Steam. Clouds. The sunlight, the power of the sun, creates clouds. Transform the water of the ocean, rivers, and lakes into clouds. And those clouds eventually will release lightning bolts. What is that? Isn't it light? So that's exactly the process that we have to learn to experience within ourselves. Exactly. The human organism is a replica of the universe. We are even a replica of the planet Earth with different physical appearance, of course. But what Mother Nature is doing is a lesson to the soul, lesson to our essence, that life has a purpose. If we want to return to the absolute, we descended here a tiny little spark. Then, if we return the same tiny little spark that lives within our heart, after millions and millions and millions of years, we come back the same way we left. Isn't it that a failure? Shouldn't we come back better than what we came from? Shouldn't we come back transform into a flame instead of a spark? It's up to us. We can choose whatever path we want. But it's important to understand that Mother Nature is the wife of the Holy Spirit. Mother Nature is water, symbolically speaking, because our body is made of water. We are made of semen. Remember my words. Respectfully, we are made of semen, the semen of our physical father, our physical mother. But within that semen is the fire connected with the spirit. So, we are made of water and we are made of fire. But within water and within fire is the light of the divinity. So it's important that we understand that. This is an exercise for everyone to meditate, including myself. So if you have any, any question, you know, or you feel like you would love to talk more about this, we should establish a connection, you know. You can write question to our email gnosticradio at gmail.com so please try to remember what we spoke already the differences between essence ego and personality and please please stop stop believing that the three are the same like many scientists continue believing Many well-intentioned people, but you know, good intentions are not enough because the Bible also says the way to hell, to inferno, is paved with good intentions. So essence, ego, and personality. Please try to remember what we have said. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name again is E. Jim G. Ross. The website is rickyradio.com. This has been episode number eight, and the title has been Essence, Ego, and Personality. Thank you again. <laughs>